Well, folks, on this week's Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine, we're doing something very, very unique that really probably many of you never, ever experienced before. And I'm going to be squirrel hunting, okay? Now you said, ah, okay, Redfern, what do you mean squirrel hunt? We all squirrel hunt. Well, no, not this way. There's no guns, there's no dogs, but there's a very unique bird called a falcon that we're going to use today. And joining me today on the show is the president of the South Carolina Falconry Association, Paul Ward, with his bird, Evie. And we've got a really great action-packed show for you today. But, you know, Paul, tell me about Evie. Tell me about hunting squirrels with falcons because this is really, really unique, and it's really going to be a special pleasure for us to have you guys on our show today. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to have you here. Uh, Evie, she's my 12-year-old female Harris hawk. Uh, I do squirrel hawk with her a bit. We generally use red tails out here because they are fully designed to hunt squirrels. Um, it's the appropriate game with the appropriate bird. Um, what we're going to be doing is flying a few different birds with you today, and uh, we hope to really bust them up. Uh, folks, I tell you what, I don't have a gun, I don't have a dog, you're not going to see that, but we're going to have some squirrels be rattling through these trees. So stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to have our first hunter up in the box. And Paul and I are going to walk behind them, and we're going to narrate a little bit on what you're going to be seeing on hunting with falcons right here on Bob Redford's Outdoor Magazine. Folks, this is why you come down here. <laughs> Pretty little small mouth right there. There you go. Hi, guys. This week's destination is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet, finding new roads in the outdoors. Today's Chevrolet destination features another great hunting destination that you can find more information about by going to Bob's Top 16 at www.bobredfern.com. And be sure to check out all the award-winning Chevrolet vehicles at chevrolet.com for your next outdoor destination. Well, folks, we're just about getting ready to start brace number one here, and I want to introduce our first hunter this morning. Uh, her name is Izzy, but her owner is Richard Leapart from Columbia, South Carolina. And I will tell you, Richard, thank you for doing this this morning, okay? And, and you know, Paul, I tell you what, um, you've got some great members Absolutely. in this organization, but you wouldn't have the organization without what's on Richard's arm here. Uh, tell me a little bit about Izzy. Uh, Izzy's a juvenile red tail. Uh, Hawk. She's about 10 months old. Uh, was taken into the falconry program back in September, and uh, she's a great hunter. And hopefully, she'll be a great hunter today. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you, uh, folks, for all you uh, Auburn fans out there, okay, we're going to be probably doing a lot of War Eagle this morning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but again, this is really a special treat for us to be squirrel hunting this morning without a dog and without a rifle, okay and watching these beautiful birds of prey do their thing with their passionate hunters um, that keep uh, these falcons uh, in shape and what they are today. So with that, Richard, it's yeah. all about you and Izzy from this point. I tell you what, you're going to be out front. Paul and I are going to be kind of narrating the hunt, and I'm kind of excited to get this started. This is a first on our TV show. Look at that beautiful bird. Mm. Wow. Look at that. Now, um, how many squirrels has she found over her lifetime? Um, she's probably taking 20, 20 plus squirrels. No kidding. Um, a handful wow. of cottontail rabbits and uh, a couple of fox squirrels and a raccoon. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. More, more than. Uh, there she goes. More than. Uh, now, Paul, I, I will tell you okay, we've got Izzy's in the tree mm -hmm. now. That is that kind of step one? Is that's that game where, on. That's, that's where that's, they go. That's game on. She okay. waits for us. We start moving. Okay. We start making a little bit of noise for her. She's going to follow us on her own because that's how Richard trained her. I got you. And uh, once we see something, she'll certainly let us know. Okay. So now as part of the hunt, um, you got other guys that are going to shake vines and yes. just kind of locate. We, we got to locate the We got to stir them up a little bit. And then she's got much better eyesight than we do. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, Paul, tell us what's going on here. All I know right, when, we're up, we're on when you guys say is that, that's a signal that's that there's the a squirrel call. in the area? 
Yeah, we're, we're on a squirrel now, so now she's watching. All we gotta do is move it again. Okay. Come on, Izzy. Hup, hup. She can see it. Good for Izzy, bad yeah. for the squirrel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get a little closer to the base of this tree. We don't want it to come down. Okay. And we want to watch what tree it skips to. If it goes across, we want to make sure we don't let it hit the ground. I got you. Exactly. So when the squirrel you. moves, she can dive straight down and rake it off the tree. Wow. Now, is there ever any worry about her hitting a branch and hurting herself or anything? You know, they do this so much. It's yeah. just, it's all natural for them. So uh, things happen. Right. That's just given with any animal, but we're not super you. worried about it. Girl, look at that. She's, she's oh carrying it. She's carrying it. Let's go, let's go, let's Woo, go. Okay. You're not carrying it well. Get that away from Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Good easy. <laughs> All right, Paul. It seems like through the bell and telemetry, you guys have found her. Got her. Oh, there she is. Wow. Oh, goodness. Wow. Look at that. That is fantastic. Now, will she relinquish it? What he's going to do is trade off with okay. another piece of meat. Oh, I um, she's been trained to do that. So what he's going to do is kind of a little sleight of hand trick. Give her the food that she wants, and he's going to slide that squirrel into his game bag. I got you. Okay, so now we're getting her away from the lure mm -hmm. and getting her back on the handler. That's right. Okay. And that's normal routine each time. Exactly. Just like that. Now, she's already caught a squirrel. Mm -hmm. We've got this far. Is she ready to do another one? If Richard if, wants if her to you, hunt again, she'd do it again right now. Really? That's right. Wow. Well, and I have to, to tell you that, you know, folks, what is so excited about this, there was a wild red-tailed hawk, and I don't, I'm not sure if you heard it. You probably didn't, but we saw it that was flying around out here as, as Izzy was, was hunting the squirrel up there, and it was kind of fascinating to watch she kind of held in place and there was one beep and whatever noise that she made, I mean, and it left the area. Yep, yep. Uh, that's just, that's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Well, I, I am, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this, this, this <laughs> that was is a good uh, hunt. This is exciting. That's how, that's how I want it to go. That's exactly how I want it to go. My goodness. Well, my hat's off to you guys. I can't wait for hunt number two, Let's okay? Because I, I will tell you, matter of fact, uh, my wife, as I was leaving this morning, just told me, she said, as I told her what we were going to do, mm -hmm. she said, well, you can bring them over here because we got more squirrels than we know what Let's to do, do with. So <laughs> we, we always need more land. Let's do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to go on hunt number two with Paul Ward and his great guys and gals here with the South Carolina Falcon Association. Chevy Silverado factory lifted trucks. Where will they take you? Silverado ZR2, Trail Boss, and Custom Trail Boss, because adventure is everywhere. Southern Woods Plantation. The name itself conjures up images of a time gone by. A time of towering pines, mule-drawn wagons, and covey after covey of Bob White quail. Southern Woods Plantation has been chosen as one of the top six hunting destinations in America. They offer great hunting, comfortable lodging, wonderful food in world-class dogs. Southern Woods Plantation, where the past can still be experienced today. Welcome to Upcountry South Carolina. Discover the six counties in Upcountry South Carolina that run from metropolitan cities with fine dining and cultural events to pristine natural beauty and all the adventure that goes with it. From hiking, rafting, to some of the best fishing in the Southeast. Six counties, one state, a million opportunities. Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned.
Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you today by these great partners. By the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, making life better in the outdoors of South Carolina. By Abu Garcia, fish to win with Abu Garcia. By Upcountry South Carolina, Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned. By Southern Woods Plantation, offering the best quail hunting in the Southeast. And by Santee Cooper Country, Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. Well, folks, listen, this is brace number two. Um, and on our second hunt here, we're uh, going to be hunting with Athena uh, and her handler and owner, uh, Brantley Broach. He's the secretary treasurer of the South Carolina Falconry Association. Uh, Brantley, tell us about Athena a little bit. Uh, this bird was trapped up in uh, Spartanburg area about nine years ago. This will be our ninth season with me. Um, does pretty good usually, so we'll see how it goes. This and way. so she is a mature red tail? Uh, correct. Yep. She's, okay. Uh, she should be nine years old this year. Wow. How long have you been doing this? Uh, right, right at nine years. Have you really? Wow. Yep. This was the first bird that, um, first bird I got. Well, you know, Paul, I tell you, you have experienced members of the association, obviously. And, and one of your goals is, obviously, to, to keep these birds of prey uh, in their element and that sort of thing. And I know that you guys do release some of these birds back into the wild. We do, yep. Well, we increase their survivability rate basically a thousandfold. Wow. Uh, there, um, there's several things in the wild that will kill these birds. Right. And we reduce that chance greatly. Uh, we do want them to breed still, so we'll hunt with them for as long as we need to hunt with them. And we'll cut them back into the wild again and let them start over and raise their own families. Maybe one day down the road, trap one of those birds and do it again. There you go. Well, I will tell you, Randy, I'm looking forward to Athena doing her thing. We'll see how it goes. She is a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Um, I know you have to be proud of what you do. The passion shows, um, but we're ready when you are. All right, I'm gonna do it. We'll walk right down here. All right. Her loose and see okay. What yep. Great. Oh, there she goes. Okay, all right, Paul. All right, game on. Game on. All right. I, I love the terminology. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Paul, talk to me a little bit about the last uh, hunt. Um, again, one of the peculiar things about it is when they locate um, the squirrel, uh, of course, you've got all the guys shaking the trees and mm -hmm. kind of help find the squirrel. Um, is, is that done every time you hunt? Unless a squirrel makes the mistake of coming out on its own, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we want to produce game, just like any other hunter who's uh, trying to flush something for somebody. I got you. So we produce the game, and then once we do, uh, the rest is up to them because we can't fly or climb that fast. Okay, I got you. So Athena is. She's behind on us her high over part. here. She's yep. behind us. Okay. She'll be following us, so we're going to stay close to Brantley. Okay. She just went. Oh, there. She may not want to play. Uh oh. <clears throat> Athena, come on. So he's gonna try to call her back. She's trained to the whistle. There she is. Oh, there she is. There she comes. There she is. There she yeah. Is. All right. She comes. She's reengaging. We're good. Let's, uh, let's, find out. let's get some bite. That's impressive. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Now, a nine-year-old, um, obviously, is pretty seasoned. Yes. Okay. Yep. H how much longer can one expect that bird to hunt? 20 more years. Really? Up, if if up. he really wanted to, yeah. Right. If he decided to keep it and not release her into the wild, he can hunt her as long as she'll live. Oh, goodness. I've known people who have had birds that got up into up, the up, near up, 30s, up. I believe. Really? Yep. Now she's checking that she's, nest. Yeah, she's again, committed, and she's committed to that nest. There. I, feel, I don't think she's in there. <laughs> well, there's more in the woods. <laughs> Let's try to find another one. Okay. There it is. There's. Ho, 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 ho. She got it, she got it, she got it. She's hanging yep. with it. She got it in her she grasp. Half mile? Yeah, <laughs> probably. She's gonna go away from us, that's for sure. <laughs> she needs to fall right down. I've been wanting to try this little bird now. Yeah? <laughs> Break it in. She got it in her grasp? She got it. Okay. 
Coming down. There she goes. Oh, I see. She got it. Yeah. Stay tuned. When we come back, more from the South Carolina Falconry Association. More than 70% of bovine fatalities are PFD related. They don't work unless you wear them. PFDs must fit individuals for their chest size and weight. This has been another safety tip from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. South Carolina's Santee Cooper Country invites you to relax and get away from the pressures of everyday life from world-class fishing, golf, camping, or lakeside dining on traditional Southern cuisine. With over 450 miles of shoreline, Santee Cooper is an exciting challenge for fishing, canoeing, and kayaking, offering unique outdoor adventures for the whole family. Santee Cooper Country. Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. To receive a free newsletter and e-news, just log on at SanteeCooperCountry.org. When hunting out of an elevated stand, always use a lifeline so you can stay connected from bottom to top. Your family will be glad you did. This has been another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. Remember, safe hunting is no accident. Nestled in the western part of South Carolina is the Old 96 District. Comprised of Abbeville, Edgefield, Greenwood, Lawrence, and McCormick Counties, this region is rich in history, fishing, hunting, and small town flavor. Old 96 District is part of the South Carolina freshwater coast, covering over 2,000 miles of shoreline which offer many fishing opportunities and is home to the only wild turkey museum in the world. Local businesses offer a wide variety of unique gifts and foods. Make sure you discover the undiscovered wonders of the Old 96 District of South Carolina. The Sportsman's Table is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Whether you live in South Carolina or coming to vacation, make sure you're purchasing South Carolina-grown farm products. Make sure your food is South Carolina certified. It's a matter of taste. Folks, welcome into this week's Sportsman's Table. We're here on the beautiful campus of Ori Georgetown Tech, the International Culinary Institute of Myrtle Beach. And I tell you what, I've got a special guest chef today, second year, soon to be graduate, William Isaac Malloy. He is uh, originated out of Charleston, okay? He's gonna cook a special recipe. This is a first for our show in over 22 years, so I want you to pay attention. How's it going? Thanks I, for man, having me. I tell you what, <laughs> William Isaac, it, this is, I mean, this is this is food now. Yeah, of course, of huh? course. Of hey, course. that's what I'm food, talking about, bro. Food that'll stick to your bones and you know, okay. Without good further, eat. yeah. Without further ado, tell the folks what we're cooking. Of today. course. So today we're cooking um, a deep fried chicken gizzards. So um, what we're gonna do? We're gonna dredge them uh, in some milk first to okay. get the dredge to start off, and then we're gonna drop it right in the flour. It's a seasoned flour, seasoned with salt, pepper, that's, paprika, yeah. onion powder, garlic powder. Stuff that's real good. And, and you know, most folk, they eat chicken livers, but yeah. most of the time, they'll throw the gizzards away. That's the mistake right there. It is, it's man. When I was mistake. a kid growing up, I always ate the chicken gizzards. If they're, if they're cooked right, they're, mm -hmm. they're great. They're one of the best yeah. pieces of chicken. So what I'm doing as well, I'm packing it in to make sure the dredge will stick. Okay. So once they're all packed in, you can knock the excess dredge off and drop them right in the fryer. I mean, I mean and... Have our fryers. You don't need no high-speed fryer. You no, do it right here on right the Right in the pot, yeah. Look at that. Growing up, we didn't have no fryer, just mm. a pot and some oil or a cast iron pan. All right, William. Yeah. Look Isaac, at that. I tell you what, look at that. GBD, oh. golden brown and delicious. Oh, man, are they ever. Of course, of course. Mm-hmm. Pull these out, and these are already seasoned. You can add a little extra salt if you like. Here, let me get, we'll we'll move this. So I'll get this out your way. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. All right, and for the plate, we have some, some uh, red rice made with Carolina gold rice. Oh, wow. Right, um, right from... Uh, from it right in Edisto, so pretty local, pretty local um, rice. That's the best way to get your food from. Oh yeah, you ain't kidding. And we have some field peas, bowl peanuts, and green lima beans. Oh goodness. We're on the outside. Well, folks, if you want a copy of William Isaac's recipe, just log on to BobRedfern.com, and it'll be right there. You can also watch the full video of him cooking it. Okay. And then we have a spicy peanut sauce to go on the outside as well. Mm, okay. Now what, what's in the sauce? So the sauce is, is pretty simple. Um, some onion, celery, peanut butter actually is where it gets so creamy, chicken stock. Really? Yeah, reduce it down, reduce it down and everything like that. Mm -hmm. and it turns out great. 
That's kind of a unique way to, to serve it too. That yeah. little iron. Of course, you don't really see, you don't really see it a lot, but I feel like it contrasts. Listen, man, you know, around. Cracker Barrel ain't got nothing no, on the of course, mind. Yeah, huh? of course That's not. what of I'm talking not. about. Look at that. I'm gonna plate threes right here, and then mm. we'll garnish to finish it off with a little. A little garnishment. Yep, a little chopped um, peanuts to go around. Okay. And then. Some. Now the peanuts add just a really a twist of a flavor. Of to course, it. of course, yeah. Whenever you have the mixture of both boiled peanuts and you know the creamy peanut um, yeah. butter uh, sauce, um, you know it really just adds makes it a whole much better. Well, William, William Isaac, I tell you what, man, I, I just I, I appreciate, I appreciate you. you coming on of today. Course, and of course, Congratulations on being a graduate here you. of the International Color Institute. Appreciate I know it. you're going to do good things, of okay? Course. And I want to put in a plug. This young man has signed up for the Air Guard here in South Carolina, uh, and he's going to be uh, loading bombs on fixed-wing aircraft. Yep. So, plus, so, you're going to go to school and get some for nutrition. Free. Of course, yeah. I plan to be a registered dietitian whenever there you I go. head back to school, hopefully in the fall of next year. So. Go to Clemson. Yep. Awesome. Okay, well, Congratulations, Thank man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And folks, remember, buy South Carolina. It's a matter of taste. Log on to CertifiedSC.com and see what's fresh on the menu. To find out more information on supporting local South Carolina farmers and their products, visit CertifiedSC.com. It's a matter of taste. Understand the fish. Design the bait. No, redesign it. Trim this. Add that. Definitely more of that. Perfect. Will they smash it? <laughs> Smashing it and holding it. That's how we do it. That's the formulas. Tweak the colors. Make it sing. Make it dance. Optimize design for that lateral line. All with a single track mind for getting hit, staying bit, ripping lips for making any fish your fish. That's our science. Berkeley science, baby. Take a journey off the beaten path to Lake Hartwell Country. Tucked away in the northeast corner of South Carolina, Lake Hartwell Country is a hidden gem with waterfalls, mountains, beautiful lakes, and history dating back to Revolutionary War times. For the outdoor enthusiasts, Lake Hartwell Country offers fishing, hiking, water recreation, horseback riding, and so much more. Come visit Lake Hartwell Country, the land by the blue wall. Chevy Silverado factory lifted trucks. Where will they take you? Silverado ZR2, Trail Boss, and Custom Trail Boss. Because adventure is everywhere. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you by these great partners. Chevrolet, find new roads with Chevrolet. By Lake Hartwell Country, the land by the blue wall. By the South Carolina Agriculture Department, it's a matter of taste. By the old 96th District of South Carolina, come discover the unexpected wonders of South Carolina's 96th District. And by South Carolina Embroidery and Screen Printing, your one stop for all your company's promotional needs. Okay, Paul. Brantley, we found it. Richard, Richard's got her. Oh, man. There she is. Oh, there she is, right there. Yeah. See how she can camouflage herself? Yeah, that, that is absolutely fantastic. Your beds. Uh huh, yeah. Beautiful display. Now, Paul, tell me, now when they do that, mm -hmm. they're trying to protect that prey from, from other birds? Exactly, so that's called mantling, when they cover it with their wings like okay. that. Uh, basically what they're doing is just trying to protect it, keep it for themselves, um, and they do that because other predators will come from on top of them and try to take it. They'll come from above, they'll fly down and swoop down and try to snatch I it got up. You. Well, I will tell you, I know Brantley can be proud of this one because- Absolutely. Uh, 
you know, Chase? Again, it's not one thing where you have an audience. I doubt they're used to this. So, right. But she just kept coming back and coming back. And it looked like it appeared that she took that um, out of a nest. She did. She ripped it straight out of a nest. Yeah. So, so now the process is is to to get the squirrel from her and swap it out for her he's, food. He's going to trade off. Yep. Okay. Now that that's the fascinating part of this, you know. Um, you know, folks, I will tell you as as you watch what Brantley's doing here. Um, this is just one of those things that is just simply remarkable. And I have learned so much this morning from hunting squirrels with falcons. Again, the, the unique thing about this, Paul, I, I didn't hear a dog bark and I didn't hear a rifle shot. <laughs> no huh? dogs. And I know you guys and gals have got to be proud of the job that they do because, again, that's part of the satisfaction of owning one. That's of these the big animals. picture. It's all about yeah, the hunt. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. And she's proud of that too. Oh, absolutely. Look at that. <laughs> she knows she's about to get some food though. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see, she jumped right off that squirrel. Oh goodness, look at that. Wow. That is fantastic. Another successful hunt. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> That's all there is to it. And a Good kill. Thing. Good kill. And Athena yeah. <laughs> is just absolutely wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She even knows she's proud, yeah. huh? Look at that. Oh my God. Brantley, you have a lot to be thankful for. Okay. But your passion shows, and Athena is just a, another one of those beautiful birds that. I just didn't know existed. And I will tell you, and Paul, come over here, man. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Richard, you come on over here too, brother. <laughs> you know, one of the great things about what I've learned this morning is this appreciation for the time and the effort that you guys have to spend, and gals, yeah. and the association to protect these wonderful birds. Plus, but you still get an opportunity to do something in the outdoors, and it's called hunting. That's right. Okay, it's, and it's I'm all about just, the hunt. I am just so impressed. Uh, it's wonderful that you guys do this, I mean, almost every day. And so, my hat's off to you, brother. Thank, thank you. you very much, Paul. Thank you, thank Richard. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. folks, listen, our first squirrel hunt on Bob Redford's Outdoor Magazine without a dog, without a rifle, huh? And with falcons. If you want to know more information about the South Carolina Falconry Association, just go to Bob's Top 16. I'll put their website up there. You just want to go and, and try and support them, I will tell you, wherever they are in their events, it would be a great opportunity for you to see something that's really worthwhile in the outdoors. Again, as we like to say each and every week, the outdoors is our passion. I want it to be yours too. We'll see you back here again next week with another great episode on Bob Redford's Outdoor Magazine.